Welcome to the Top Business Leader Show, powered by Rise 25 Media. We feature top founders, executives, and business leaders from all over the world. Chad Franzen here, co-host for this show, where we feature top restaurateurs, investors, and business leaders. This is part of our Spot On series. Spot On has the best-in-class payment platform for retail, and they have a flagship solution called Spot On Restaurant, where they combine marketing, software, and payments all in one. They've served everyone from larger chains like Dairy Queen and Subway to small mom-and-pop restaurants. To learn more, go to spoton.com. This episode is brought to you by Rise25. We help B2B businesses to get ROI, clients, referrals, and strategic partnerships through Done For You podcasts. If you have a B2B business and want to build great relationships with clients, referral partners, and thought leaders in your space, there's no better way to do it than through pun than through podcasts and content marketing. To learn more, go to rise25media.com or email us at support at rise25media.com. Fred Langley is Chief Executive Officer at Restaurant Systems Pro, an all-in-one solution for the restaurant operator. Restaurant Systems Pro offers checklists, training systems, operations manuals, budgeting, manager logs, smartphone apps, and much, much more. Fred, thanks so much for joining me today. How are you? Thanks for, thanks for having me on, Chad. Really good to be here. Yeah, thank you. Hey, uh, so can you tell me what your history is with Restaurant Systems Pro? I know you've been the CEO for well over a decade. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, so I it's actually left it's less than a decade. So in 2004, our company was founded. And that time was a restaurant tour in Northern California. And, um, you know, chef owner of a restaurant operating my sales were um, good. I wanted them to be a little bit better. Um, I was doing over over a couple million a year in my, you know, like a 3000 square foot restaurant. So pretty good sales um, for there. Um, I wanted my bottom line um, to get better. And of course, as sort of an um, egotistical chef, I don't know if you've ever heard of a chef with an ego, but they, <laughs> go, they go hand in hand. So my, I'm like, oh, I'm operating just fine. Uh, only thing I need to do to increase my bottom line is to increase sales. And in the restaurant business, um, there's so many uh, opportunities in our operations to increase our bottom line. And sometimes restaurateurs do what I did. Um, and they think, hey, the only way I'm going to grow my bottom line is to increase sales. When actually, if you really dig into operations, sometimes you can lose money faster by if you're not operating the correct uh, the correct way by increasing sales. So we really caution against um, you know getting certain things in order in a certain direction. So I signed on. I went to this marketing seminar to um, grow my sales because that's what I thought the solution that I was needed. And I got to the marketing seminar, and there was like, hey, there's this email program. And if you buy the email program, I'll tell you what it is. And here's a PR program. And if you buy it, I'll tell you what it is. And I'd already paid to be there. So I was like, what is happening here? This is not cool. And uh, But it was just a sales pitch after sales pitch on these different programs. Well, on the last day, in the last hour, um, the not fun person went on stage. And that's my ex-partner, David Scott Peters. He goes on stage and he's talking. And he's the founder of our company. Um, starts talking budgeting inventory, recipe costing cards, not the sexy butts and seat stuff, but you know, the hard work that goes into running a restaurant. And um, I really connected with him. He actually delivered something that I could take home and make a difference. I signed up immediately. And with a month of me signing up, he called me up and he's like, Hey man, you're really, you're really taking, you know, kicking butt on this stuff. And at that time we're just a coaching, a coaching program, no software, nothing. And so uh, he said, you are doing well. Plus, you know, I'm from the chain world. You are a chef actually operating restaurants in the independent restaurant world. Um, I really think that that our, our skill set could could come together nicely. And especially kitchen questions, you can answer those and take care, take care of that. So um, so he I just like traded my membership at that point to take a few calls. And then I'm taking calls like crazy. And um, I'm helping a lot of people and doing coaching over the phone, um, using GoToMeeting and stuff back back in, at that time, um, and just phone calls with coaching restaurants. Um, I really honed my skills because I, I really realized that if I was going to coach restaurants, I could not be a hypocrite. And I had to be doing every single thing that I asked somebody to do. And so there were certain systems that I thought I didn't need that when I implemented, I was like, man, I did need those too, just because your own ego gets in the way. Um, sometimes. And so, you know, where you think you don't need help, I found that I did and it kept me, kept me on track. So you, you mentioned that you were a, a chef owner of a restaurant before this. 
Um, can you tell me a little bit about kind of your evolution within the restaurant industry up to that point? Yeah. So, so at 12 years old, I started as a uh, dishwasher. Um, I worked in a restaurant that my uh, my mom was, she was serving tables Friday and Saturday nights, and she managed the lodge. It was attached to the restaurant out in the Sonoma County, Northern California, Sonoma County coastline. And um, I was a six foot tall, 12 year old. So I was able to get in there. My mom was working there. So they let me go in and work. And um, it just went from there. I was just fell in love with it. I found out that if I wouldn't bust some tables for the girls, they'd tip me out. That if I was doing better on prep, I could have less time in the dish pit. And so, uh, you know, I got my knife skills up and really worked hard to learn. And I had fun. Um, you know, when I was when I was 14 and 15, I had a job doing a, you know, in construction during the day and would go to the restaurant. In the construction, I would look at my my watch after an hour and a half of the day thinking six hours had gone by, you know, and then I'd go in the restaurant and our, the shifts would just go like that. And it was just a blast. And I just was in love with it. Um, when I was 15, a classically trained European chef came to work there and he just took me under his wing and started teaching me techniques, cleaning fish, making stocks, knife skills, you know, cooking on the line, you know, of flavor combinations. He just really it became an apprenticeship for me. Um, by the time I was 18, I went and worked at one of the top restaurants in Sonoma County, uh, John Ashton Company, and just worked my way up as chef. I did things like I'd go and work with the farmers where our tomatoes came from. I'd go and work with the the goat farmer and see how the cheese was made and and then go and work at the bakery and learn my pastry skills. And I'd work in the docks in San Francisco with our fishmongers. Today. So I was always taking my education in my own hands and growing throughout all of this in my career. Um, by the time I was 27, I'd worked up, worked my way up and I was wondering, hey, which way am I going? And I decided I wanted to be my own boss and open my own my first restaurant um, at 27 in 2003. Um, so, yeah. What kind of a restaurant was that? Farm to table, fine dining, um, you know, chef driven restaurant and, you know, with all the microclimates, which makes it good for growing grapes. And Sonoma County is also great for ag agriculture. And so it's just really a... Um, a great place to be a chef. Some of the best restaurants in the world are in Napa, Sonoma. Um, and so, you know, we were, I was just really just a good playground as a chef to come up. Um, through 2008, I actually through all this and opened multiple restaurants, more casual pizzeria and became a multi-unit um, operator. Um, and as I'm going through that, so that's kind of how I got in uh, really quick, how I got into yeah. becoming a, a chef and, and working my way through that, working for different places and taking my education in my own hand. I, um, in 2005, our clients that were learning um, from us and our coaching program were like, hey, we need to do this stuff faster. And so I started hitting a plane almost every week, visiting restaurants and consulting and putting in, physically putting in place in these systems in other restaurants across the country. So I had to really practice what I preach because I'm leaving my restaurants to get on a plane to go and coach others. And, and, and with that, our software journey started in 2007. We launched a budgeting software for restaurants and we lost a bit, launched a desktop. Remember desktop, put your disc in the computer and you download the software and there you go. Um, so uh, then we did a menu engineering software that, that plotted the graphs and helped with recipes costing and profit margin, you know, and how do we design them and all that stuff. Um, and then we did a break-even point calculator, which today is integrated in all into our, our software. We started, we started uh, our software journey online for online browser-based software. We started programming it in 2009, threw it all out in 2010, started over and launched it in 2011. What kinds of... Uh... If you can think of maybe like a story or what kinds of lessons did you learn as a as a chef owner um, that yeah. kind of have helped you in this endeavor? Yeah. So one of the biggest things as a chef owner um, that I had to learn, and especially as I was growing, I'm going to consult in other restaurants and help other restaurants. I had to, uh, you know, practicing what I preach meant letting go. Right. And so. As a driven chef, I was very controlling and very like, hey, I need to do this. And I, need, I need to do it. I need to know. Um, in fact, we got away from doing, you know, basics like inventory because I, I became too busy to do them and it wasn't delegating properly. And everybody needed me for an answer. And how do I operate? And as good as I am and as good as I, I was, you can never truly do everything. And you have to be able to train people and need to have systems for them to to follow. You have to have training that is not just showing them how to do it, but follow up and checking for understanding and, um, you know, practice re repetition and accountability to the, all those things. And so um, I kind of got, you know, as I was consulting, I, I had to really 
force myself into that. And, and we were, and as soon as I let go, our numbers got better and better and profitability went up as I was able to, as a young chef, thinking that I could control everything to realize that I gained control by giving up control. And that's one of the, one of the biggest lessons in my career uh, that I've taken. Yeah. Can you give me kind of like a broad view of Restaurant Systems Pro? I know when I uh, I, when yeah. I, me- I mentioned all the things you guys do in your introduction, but yeah, maybe, you know, like lot. like for somebody who's, who's just new or just finding out about it might be interested. Can you give yeah. me kind of a broad view? So the chains, a lot, a lot of big chains will have an operating system that they, that they use, right? A system that has everything in its place, that has... Um, that has their their you know place to do inventory, place for recipe cost cards, a place that ha- that they have, and and the chains do this because if you have five thousand restaurants, if you're to develop a three million dollar software, well, you take three million dollars and you divide it by five thousand dollars, five thousand restaurants, and it doesn't cost that much to, to put out and, and get done. But if I'm a, if I'm an independent restaurant and I have you know one to twenty restaurants, I can't possibly do that. And so we became that resource, and we provide all the systems and processes that the chains use to be extremely profitable. And to scale, and we bring them to a lot of independents. We have a lot of small chains that are using us, uh, potential franchisees that are using us. Um, we are the all-in-one system for that, and and we help you identify the systems, give you the training, and give you everything that you need um, to be successful. And it's kind of like, you know, it could be you could also look at it as a, a tool or a plan for weight loss or getting in shape. Um, that all those plans are really good, but if you don't use them. You know, you're not going to really achieve the results. So we are a tool for you to achieve. We don't replace what you do. A lot of times people think what we do because they can't conceive, um, you know, lowering their costs or where they're at because they're working. You know, restaurant people are the hardest working people around, but they're also really stubborn and changing their ways. Um, so sometimes they can't conceive and they think what we do is help them buy cheaper products or change all their pricing or, and do all those things. And it's so far from what we do. We help, we help you increase quality, increase hospitality while driving down costs. And we do that through more control. Like for example, people think like, Oh, checklists and systems and processes. I don't want to go corporate. Well, if, is having lemons ready for service. So if somebody orders iced tea and I go back and there's no lemons ready and I'm running around trying to cut lemons on the fly and they're sitting there waiting, is that making me, uh, less of who I want to be or more of who I want to be to the guests, right? And so organization and all that. And employees are happier and they stay longer when they have organization and systems and processes to follow. And it ranges from a manager log to inventory and all the way up to your accounting and budgeting systems. Yeah, you guys, uh, you also, you talked about helping control food costs in that way. What about costs associated with paying staff? Yeah, so we have labor control. So the full prime cost. So in the restaurant business, we track prime costs which is your total cost of goods sold and total labor. We get rest- most restaurants are operating in the 75 range, which is where you end up with that either break even or, you know, that three to 5% profit, right? If they're in the 65 to 70, they're getting three to 5% profit, which is what the average restaurant uh, profit is. We get restaurants to a 55 prime cost by controlling labor. We not only control labor, but we also offer the, the scheduling systems and app for your employees where they can swap schedules and manage it all in one, one place as well. So not only do we have the financial controls and budgeting, um, but you know we, we offer the, the, um, the, the systems for the employees to request time and swap shifts and put in their, their, their um, availability and all that stuff too. Our labor schedules, a lot of times, you know, how we end up taking systems and you use systems. We have a big, we start with a big picture, right? We have these big picture financial goals for a restaurant, but then we have to take these big picture financial goals and delegate them down to people's level of responsibility. So you may, so a lot of times a new manager, the first thing they do is they'll write maybe a host schedule, right? There's not a whole lot of employees, a lot less moving parts, and it's a great, you know, um, spot to start. So instead of going, hey, we need to hit a 1%, you know, host, budget. So now they're like, well, how do I know what 1% is? What am I going to do in sales? What am I going to, you know, how do I even hit a 1%? How do I know the schedule I've, I've written? What we do is we take it and we say, oh, hey, success for you is scheduling 85 hours, total hours. Go write a schedule and stay within that. The system tells you if you're over or under and you're able to, you know, make these hard things a little bit easier, which makes them easier to delegate and to, to pass on. That's how we save restaurateurs time and money at the same time. You also help with training. 
Yeah, so we have full training systems. So we have a learning management system within our software where you have quizzes and, and uh, you know, check for understanding. You can insert videos. You can attach QR codes to your recipes that show exactly. Uh, here's a video on how exactly how we want to do it. You can, you know, sometimes you can, if you want to, you can put them on like a Google Drive, but they load slower. But so if you hide them on YouTube, YouTube will optimize and make those videos play faster. And so we'll take you to a hidden YouTube video that, you, you know, right away, that's how to make our our special recipe exactly how you want it as the owner delegate that all throughout your company what kind of uh, influence or advice do you guys give on menus so we don't do menu design but we actually lay out all the suggestions we we have um, eye movement studies that we use we know where the most profitable parts are of a three panel menu two panel menu one panel menu and we'll lay it out you know, I see so many times people make a mistake. They don't know how eye movement works and where it is, and they'll put their dollar fifty sides in the most profitable point on their menu, right? And so, with recipe costing cards and all that information, our menu engineering software helps us quickly identify our most profitable profit profitable items and place them in the most profitable areas. And depending on concept, we'll suggest pictures or boxing or however the concept is. I, I never even uh, thought about that. This is the first time I've ever talked to anybody about that. How much yeah. of a financial difference can something like that make? Oh, it's massive. In, in fact, we can save people up to five points immediately without even raising prices, just by directing the customers to it. There's a, you know, if we look, um, is this going to go out as a video? Yeah, but it's okay. It is, yes. What's that? It is going to be as a video. Yeah, so you have four quadrants, right? We help you identify, right? So you have four quadrants here. Um, and we have... We have this access here, right? And this is this is um, this is quantity sold or velocity, right? And then this is profit, right? So if we plot it, we have a star up here, which means a lot sold and a lot of profit, right? Right. Down here we have a dog, which is it's not profitable and we don't sell many. Then we have these things called a um, this is a plow horse, we call it. Right, I sell I sell a lot of them. My guests love them, but they're not as profitable. Maybe it's a side sell. Everybody orders a side sell with it, so it will live here. That's okay. But then we have a puzzle over here where the puzzle is these high profit items that aren't selling as much. And if we could just take these these items that are puzzles and move them up the chart to a star, meaning we're selling more of our more profitable items, then it's magical. And wow. menu design can help help do that. Okay, well that's that's very interesting and good to know. Uh, you guys also help with ordering systems. How how so we have how? ordering systems where we connect. You know, you can place an order in our system. It'll automatically notify your salesman. Uh, it'll it'll track it. We know the up to date pricing as the invoices come in. It updates your pricing. It's connected to your recipe costing cards in a in a database. So your inventory is always up to date. Your uh, recipe costing cards are all used up to date. So you know your ideal and theoretical food costs, which is we have budget, but then we have, hey, what's potentially possible and where are the leaks in the, in the dollars? And then you also can track it by item, meaning, hey, I know I bought 40 pounds of chicken breast this week, right? And use 40 pounds because of inventory. Um, and I compare that to my POS system, which a lot of we connect with a lot of POS systems. So they'll say, hey, ideally, you should have used 30 pounds of chicken breast, but now I know I actually use 40 pounds. And so I can identify and go concentrate on where did that other 10 pounds of chicken go? Did we over portion it? Did it get wasted? Did it get not counted in inventory? And you start solving all these problems in your in your numbers by know by knowing. And anything measured improves for sure. How has COVID affected or changed anything the restaurant systems pro does? Oh, massively, massively. It majorly impacted our, our company. Um, a large portion of our uh, revenue was, was um, consulting, right? So going out, getting on a plane, I've consulted to go out and help restaurants. Well, guess what happened immediately, right? We lose all of that. We can't possibly be charging. We didn't have the, uh, we did not, um, you know, charge, even though we had, we don't put, we don't put contracts in place, right? And so immediately that happens, we're not going to charge you. Um, when we do consulting, we don't make you sign a contract because we are so good at what we do. We don't need a contract to make you pay us. You're going to be so happy to write that check to us. That's our that's how our plan and that's how we do it. Same thing with our software. We actually don't require contracts. When my software consultant tells me you're dumb for not doing that, hey, restaurateurs are not very trusting people. And if you'd say, hey, you have to work with me. You have to pay me for a year before you can get out. No, we have to deliver. It's up to our job to make sure that we're making a difference for you. And so we don't require those things. So 
so with all this, you know, without those contracts in place, you know, that's where it, it hit us. But that's where we also got to put our money where our mouth is on, hey, what kind of integrity do we have in this? So we set out to help people. We we worked with restaurants as far as even from the just the software user to the consulting client. What do we have to do to make sure you survive this? And so I was not sleeping, reading the laws that were coming out and we were helping people with their PPP loans. We were creating graphic design and QR codes for people and not charging them for it. Um, because they needed, they needed that. They needed to be able to have, you know, all all that stuff. We um, we were uh, we had people that were, we did it first for our clients. We, we don't do online ordering here, but we were setting it up for clients because all of a sudden you can't have people and they need to have online ordering. And so even as we got through our clients, we went out and people that were not our clients, we were setting up. Um, online ordering for them. You know, you just imagine you have this this person not really technology technologically savvy. They don't have online ordering, and now it's the only way that they can do business. And so we're going and helping people um, set that stuff up for free, and really just serving the industry well. Um, we were being educated on what the employer retention tax credit was, what the PPP was. We actually do the employer retention tax credit for restaurants today. We've gotten over eleven million dollars back for restaurants. We don't charge. We do charge, but we're charging. 5% when, with a max of 5K when most CPAs just charge 20% flat. There's one client I got I got $200,000 for, a CPA would have charged them 40 grand and I charged them $5,000 because I know they need that money for their business, right? And so we've just helped so many people with that. And, they, and I'll guess what? You don't have to pay me that $5,000 until you get your $200,000 check also, right? So it's just our job to serve the community. When the when the law was updated last December, that's when we knew we could start going out and get the employee retention tax credit for restaurants as well. Yeah, you mentioned uh, uh, the fact that you only charge that customer um, five thousand dollars when you could have charged them much more. Your core values are listed pretty prominently on your website: educate, empathy, integrity, fun, and lead. Uh, certainly, that was a, a, a sign of empathy. Why are those core values important, and why did you want to share them uh, with? So you? those are impor- important. Important. Um, they're actually on our wall. I can see them right over there for my whole my whole company to see. But one day we actually um, I came out and we were just kind of talking. In fact, if we look at it, I took a, a marker. Let me do a marker. Sit here. I took my marker and I wrote on our wall over the top of it. Then and I didn't cancel those out because they all uh, uh, what's what we stand. But I went and I wrote over the top of them, serve them well in a big black marker, right? And them is the restaurant community. And it's just our job. We put that, if we know that if we put that principle in front of everything else, that we're going to make right decisions. So even if my employees make a terrible decision about something, as long as their heart was to serve them well, we, we're going to deal with it. It's, it's absolutely fine. So it's the directive for everybody. It's what we um, think about in every interaction is what can we do to sacrifice for the restaurant, for restaurants and serve them and put them first. And we know if we do that, then everything else will take care of itself. Uh, I have one last question for you. But first, how can people find out more about Restaurant Systems Pro? Yeah, Restaurant Systems Pro on Facebook. We have a YouTube channel that has a ton of following uh, on it. Just search Restaurant Systems Pro um, on YouTube. You'll find us there. There's lots of lessons and, and, and tips and tricks. Um, our, our website is restaurantsystemspro.net. You can schedule demos and, and you know connect with our sales team to see how we can serve you uh, better. Uh, last question for you. In your career, you know you have literally done and seen it all when it comes to the restaurant industry. How has it how has it changed and what it takes to succeed in it? How has all those things changed uh over your over the course of your career? Right. So you in fact we used to have a standard for 65 prime costs when we started. And what happened was is just because we started to see results and, and do 55 prime costs with a lot of our clients, um it's it, it's there. Um, I think where where the big change needs to happen is really kind of getting rid of those limiting beliefs about what's possible. You know, when you're when you're head down working so hard and you don't feel like you can work any harder, you don't really want to look into a system that you have to put more work into, right? But we don't want to stay where we're at forever. We want to move beyond where we're at. And if you look around, there's lots of successful restaurateurs that are operating to 
five, 10, 20, 200, 1,000 restaurants. Um, now, when you get to get higher, like Applebee's, you know, not to insult Applebee's, but people go to Applebee's because they suck the same way every single time, right? So I, I know I'm insulting Applebee's, but they have their own software and they're not going <laughs> to what we're doing. We want to be great. We want to help them be great. And when you can open up and you cannot be that that person that thinks that they all have it, have it all figured out. I don't have, I don't know at all. Like you said, I have a lot of perspective. I've seen a lot. And guess what? I'm still learning. You know, we just, one of our members just was really successful in hiring people. It had a line of people out the door ready to hire. And I'm like, teach me so that I can teach others. Right. And because, of, you know, I, I'm able, I'm able to be in a position to do that. So we put out a training on, how to have a line of employees out just because even though that's not like what we do, we know restaurants need that and we go and find the need and fill the need. And when I don't know the answer, we're going to be honest and we're going to find it too. So just be open-minded to um, to learning always. I don't care what you're doing. You always have something to learn. Okay. Hey, uh, that's, that's great insight. And uh, I really appreciate your time today, Fred. It's been great talking to you. I can tell you're very passionate about uh, what you're doing in the industry. And I, I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. It's been an honor. So long, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Top Business Leaders Show, powered by Rise25. Visit rise25.com to check out more episodes of the show and to learn more about how you can start your own podcast.